Greetings, my name is Colin Knapp, and I am one of the pastors of this beloved community, Pilgrim Congregational Church. Today is a special day. It is Pentecost Sunday, and for our particular community, it is also Confirmation Sunday, a day when we celebrate the journey of our newest, youngest members. Thanks for being here. today. Uh, please join me in the call to worship. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The Spirit comes like a breath, rene renewing to life to the people of God. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy to witness to the love of God. 
the spirit of the living God comes to us and transforms arms our lives by your power. Hi, my name is Henry Nix, and I am one of your. I have the honor of being one of your liturgists today. Please join me in opening prayer. Thank you, God, for giving us this chance to join the congregation today, and thank you for helping us get through this crazy, crazy school year through like COVID and yeah. Uh, we have like only 14 more days of school left in this school year, and until then, we're just waiting. Thank, thankful to you for helping us get this long. We only yeah. Thank you for bringing us this close to su the summer. Thank you for everything. Amen. Amen. Now, please join Janine in singing the opening hymn, Spirit, Open My Heart. Let us now confess our sins before God and one another, trusting in God's, the goodness of God's love for us and all people. Holy and merciful God, we do not know how to pray as we ought, and we know too well our failures to do as you have commanded and to hold fast to your word. And forgive us for our nurture, guide us to your way, keep us in your care, and lead us into faith. We trust that your word, that the spirit of truth, will show us all things and grant us courage and peace. Amen. People of God, sisters and brothers, the spirit of God's truth has come upon creation and upon you to be a people of peace. Reconcile to God and one another through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. My dear pilgrim friends, peace be with you. Hello, Pilgrim Congregational Church. Spencer, Lois, and Nicole Tyson wish each and every one of you the best. We look forward to worshiping with you very soon. Take care. Lots of love. Pass the cookies from Lou and James. Boo's a new bunny, and they came from, and all bunnies that you heard of came from Kathleen and Jenny. Peace, Peace be, be with, with you. you. Peace be with you. Hello, fellow pilgrims. Uh, I'm wishing you of the peace of Christ, 
May you know and experience that peace and share it with others as well. Good morning, Pilgrim. Peace be with you. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading chapter 15, verses 26 through 27, and chapter 16, verses 4 through 15. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, Sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I did not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me about righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer, about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father is, has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. special celebration today for us here at Pilgrim and also for the greater church. First of all, congratulations to Kiera and Henry for completing your confirmation classes and for deciding to officially join our family here at Pilgrim. We are so proud of all of you. And also today we are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Do you know what that is? I have a little hint right here. What do you think this is? Well, a birthday present, of course. So we're celebrating a birthday. How do you celebrate your birthday? Maybe with a special dessert, or you go to a special location to celebrate, or have a party at your home, have some special games or a special meal. At our house, we always have the person eat off this special plate that says you are special today. That's a tradition that we have at our house. Well, today we're celebrating Pentecost, which is the birthday of the church. We know that over 2000 years ago, when the disciples and Jesus were on the earth, they spent their time working with Jesus, helping him with his ministry, and sharing the story of God's love. But once Jesus was crucified and went up to heaven, they were a little confused, not very organized. They didn't have a plan. They didn't know how they were gonna share God's love. But everything changed for them and the others that were gathered there on that Pentecost day. Let's hear the story. So there was a lot of people gathered in the town because it was this very special festival. And all the people were gathered when all of a sudden, a huge wind came through and started to blow all around them. And then down from heaven came a flame over each of their heads. And another amazing thing happened all these people that were gathered from, were from all over the country and spoke many different languages. And it was like 
a huge Google translator just came through and they were able to understand each other and what they were saying. So this wind is blowing and these flames are above their head and they can all understand each other. And it was all a gift of the Holy Spirit that was coming into them. It was like they had a moment where they said, aha, I get it now. I know how to go out and share the story of God's love because I can feel that love and that spirit inside of me. So now that they all had the Holy Spirit within them, they knew how to share God's love and God's story. They got it now. They had a game plan. So they went forth and shared the story with others. And those people shared it with others and more believers came. And that was like the beginning of the church, the birthday of the church. It's when all began to be organized and have a plan. So today we say happy birthday to the church. And we also have the chance to have that Holy Spirit within us. God gives us that gift to be able to share his message and his love if only we choose to accept it. So happy birthday, church. I'm looking forward to seeing some of you soon as we gather for in-person connect today and continue the celebration of the birth of the church. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your church. I'm glad I am part of your family and grateful to welcome Henry and Kiara to our family. Help me to share your love and tell others about Jesus. I love you, God, and thank you for loving me. Amen. Our second scripture reading comes from Acts. I will be reading from chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia, Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and prophetites, Christians and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, th these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is a special day. 
for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's Confirmation Sunday. And so we celebrate the faith and work of our newest members, Henry and Chiara. We recognize the support that they have received from their mentors as well, from Russ Sorber and Kathy Pettigo. The process of raising up those in the faith is truly communal work. We are reminded by this process that our faith is not merely ours. And so we come together this Sunday in true joy. But it is not just Confirmation Sunday. The second reason, it is also Pentecost. This is a significant day on the Christian calendar, historically the second most important Sunday of the year, other than Easter. It is a day that Luke records in Acts when the divine spirit of God falls upon the disciples for the very first time. We sometimes refer to this day as the birthday of the church because it is by God's spirit that we as the body of Christ are led. It is this spirit that gives us life and causes us to see and hear one another, brings about unity amidst our diversity, and ends our hostilities towards one another. Today, I hope we might see the connection between what God is doing in Pentecost, what God is doing with our newest members, and what God is up to in our own lives. As I read the scripture passages, I was struck by the names that Jesus gives to this spirit in the Gospel of John. The first, in the Greek, is translated into English as advocate. Some translations say counselor or comforter. Literally, the word parakletos, it means to, to come alongside. Now, these are not just symbolic names. The names of the Spirit speak to a living reality that is fundamental to the Christian experience. And the Spirit's work in our lives takes on even deeper meaning when we see the context of John's Gospel text here. In academic circles, we commonly refer to it as the farewell discourse. In other words, Jesus is saying his goodbyes. He's trying to tell the disciples that this miraculous three-year adventure they've been on together is about to be over. There is the anticipation of grief, of sorrow, of not knowing when or if the disciples will ever see Jesus again. We know that it is hard to say goodbye. At the summer camp that I worked at during high school and college, we would often experience this with our campers at the end of the week. Most of them had come to ride horses. Now mind you, they were just there for five days, not three years. But what they would experience in that time was for many of them truly magical. They were so enchanted by everything and anything that they did with the horses. The size of the animal, the way they moved in the fields and on the trails, how their skin felt on their noses when they affectionately would pet them. The excitement that came from realizing the power of those leather reins in their small little hands. And so on the last day, when their parents would be there to pick them up in just a few short hours, we would walk down to the corral together one last time to say our goodbyes. And the children would feed their favorite horse a carrot or an apple. And sometimes the weight of that moment would just 
kind of overwhelm them. They would begin to think about all that had happened that past week, and they would cry, knowing that it would soon be over. It is difficult to say goodbye. It can be, of course, quite painful. The weight of grief, even in simple childhood memories, can be too much. Our brains just don't work that well in those sort of moments. And so, in this moment, for the disciples, and now for us, Christ promises us a comforter, someone to talk to, help us process things, figure out what to do next, and how to heal. A spirit that comes alongside us, holds our hand, stays near us as the night dawns, promises the sun will rise in the morning. It is exactly the thing the disciples needed. I think it's exactly what most of us need right now after 14 months in isolation. Pain, trauma, grief. It's been a terribly hard year. But God's Spirit is with us. Even if we don't feel it, maybe especially if we don't feel it. We believe in faith that it's true and that nothing can separate us from that love. That this love isn't just something we put into action for the sake of those on the margins. That's true. But it's also a love that we are invited to, to receive it. That there's nothing we have to do to earn it. Nothing else to do for someone else first. It's just there for us, for you. God knows that this Life can be too painful sometimes. God knows we aren't very good with change. God promises to help us through it. If that's where you find yourself this morning, know that you're not alone. I will not claim to speak for everyone at Pilgrim, but I think it's safe to say that most of us are right there too. We could all use some comforting. Most of us just want to hug one another. And we would if we weren't so scared of getting sick. We all need some time to just process and heal. To make sense of what this past year has been. And now, <laughs> and now, once again, suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, we're being asked to do what may, to many of us, be uncomfortable and anxiety-provoking once again. The CDC has now stated, as of last Friday, that fully vaccinated folks don't need to wear masks in most situations. According to the research, vaccinated folks are highly unlikely to spread the virus to others. Vaccinated folks even appear to be safe from most of the known vi variants. According to that same website, vaccinated folks can even sing in a choir, indoors, without a mask on. Just like that, everything changes. The rules are different. It's really quite miraculous if you think about it. We've been given permission to go about doing what was once normal. If you're honest, it's also hard to feel comfortable with what we previously believed to be quite dangerous. In this new moment of change, again, we need God's Spirit to come alongside us, to help us face our fears, to comfort us, to help us make wise choices 
where everyone can receive God's loving presence in a safe way. There are other names for the Spirit that God gives, that Jesus gives in this passage. The second name is also quite revealing. Jesus calls it the Spirit of Truth. The Spirit of Truth. This Spirit continues the work of Jesus. It speaks to the ultimate truth that Christ shows us, that is, the love of God, the inbreaking of God's kingdom in all places and people. It is the triumph over death through resurrection. It is the reconciliation of all things to God when we will all eat at the heavenly banquet table. The spirit of truth helps us to see and believe this reality that is both right now but also not yet. For the early church, the Spirit's presence bore witness to the very words and actions of Jesus animating those first disciples, the early followers. It inspired this activity and zeal that led many of them to live in radically different ways. Ambrose, he was uh, the Bishop of Milan in the late 4th century. He writes a hymn about the Spirit of Truth. Here's what he says. Come, Holy Spirit, whoever won, are with the Father and the Son. It is the hour our souls possess with your full flood of holiness. Let flesh and heart and lips and mind sound forth our witness to humankind and love light up our mortal frame till others catch the living flame. Isn't that wonderful? This is the spirit our confirmands are choosing to faithfully follow today. It's a day of joy, but it isn't just for them. It's also for all of us. All of us are called to follow this spirit of truth, to allow God's spirit to enter into our very being in an ever deepening faith that is continuous throughout our life. In many ways, our confirmand's journey is really just beginning. The same is true for us. The spirit of truth has work to do in all of our lives. This is, I admit, a triumphant vision. But before we get too excited, get all high and mighty, we would be prudent to remember what it costs to live with the truth, what it means to speak truth to power, to live by love in a world that all too easily descends into violence and hatred. Because most of the time, the world doesn't want to be presented with the truth. It can be a painful thing to hear it is here that we also realize the Spirit imparts to us courage to bear witness, to bear witness to a world that refuses to believe the truth and instead so often prefers to live with a lie. Courage will be required because being led by the Spirit of truth means naming evil as evil. Darkness and light are not the same thing. We are currently creating, or perhaps we're just reviving, a culture in America that likes to pretend that culpable ignorance is morally neutral. And therefore, it can be politely excused. It is not neutral. It does active harm. We must not go backwards to a world of half-truths and alternative facts. We must not tolerate lies 
with silence. We are not merely called to just look away at injustice or oppression. We cannot just pretend it isn't real because it isn't happening to me or someone I care about or it isn't happening in Oak Park. Wink, wink. Even though we know that it is, we've done this nonsense long enough. We've played this story out again and again and again. We know what the end result is. My sisters and brothers, the truth will not cause us harm. It will set us free to be the people we were always meant to be. So today, on this Pentecost day, we are called to follow the Holy Spirit that comes in our midst. This Spirit has borne witness to us, and now we see our confirmation students responding in faith. Thanks be to God. We know that the Spirit will both comfort and challenge us. God's presence will also heal us and go before us, but it will also lead us to a not-so-comfortable place, a place where we are called to live with the truth. This is one of the many paradoxes of our faith. So may you receive this spirit this day. It is God in our midst that promises to never leave us or forsake us. It is the spirit of truth. So may you hear the truth and bear witness to it today. In the name of the triune God, Amen.
and so now we come to the time in our service where we celebrate our newest members Henry and Chiara we have been on a journey this year we have met on zoom we have met in person this is actually the first time I've seen either one of their faces without a mask on um, so kind of just learning what they look like for the first time we have met for 24 weeks if you can believe it they have read the Gospel of Luke they have met with their mentors they have participated in questions and learning uh, and we have met every week together over the course of this year and so now we celebrate uh, their entrance as members of the body of Christ at Pilgrim Congregational Church and so I ask you Kiara and Henry will you join with us as often as you are able as we gather together week by week to worship God through song prayer confession preaching baptism communion and Thanksgiving yes we will no. will you join with us as we give ourselves daily to following the way of Jesus Christ through acts of devotion to God and through acts of mercy and loving service to one another yes, yes with, with God's, God's help, help we will join, we'll join you in following, following the way of Jesus Christ. Christ will you join with us as we seek to cultivate a community of friendship that seeks to shine as a light to the world of God's love mercy and grace yes with God's, with God's help, help we will join, join you in becoming, becoming a community, community of friendship, of friendship. Will you join with us as we seek in the name of Christ to serve those in need, both in and beyond the life of this congregation, caring for the sick, providing for the poor, encouraging the downhearted, feeding the hungry, working for justice and peace? Yes, yes with, with God's, God's help, help, we will join in serving, serving others in the name of Christ. Christ. And will you join with us as together, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we contribute our time, our talents, and our money as we strive to be God's people in and for the world. Yes, yes with, with God's, God's help, we will join you in sharing, sharing our time, our, time, our, our talents, talents, and our money to strengthen God's church. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you that by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome sin and brought us to yourself. And that by the sealing of the Holy Spirit, you have bound us to your service of the poor and powerless. Renew in Kiara and Henry the covenant you made with them at their baptism. Send them forth in the power of your Holy Spirit to perform the service you have set before them. Amen. And now, my brothers and sisters, gathered here together as a community of faith, I ask you these questions. As a community of faith, it is with great joy and anticipation that we receive you in the name of Christ. We, we welcome you as fellow travelers, travelers on this pilgrimage of faith. Remember this day as a beginning, and remember this congregation is your home. We, we confirm your decision to welcome with, with us and, and dedicate ourselves anew to walking this road with you. We know that your journey will take you beyond this place. Wherever you go, we pray that you will discover that God is present in all times and places. Join with us as together we continue to learn what it means to worship God. Sing with us, pray with us, learn with us, question with us, confess and forgive with us serve with us we know that who you will become is yet to be known as you grow into adulthood we pray your knowledge and love of God will grow with you today we confirm your decision to claim this faith as your own in the name of Jesus Christ we receive you in faith in hope and in love. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Yeah.
Congratulations, Henry. I invite you now to join me in prayer. You are welcome to share your joys and concerns in the chat on YouTube Live. I do invite you to remember that it is a public chat. And today's prayers are once again responsive. So when I say, Lord, hear our prayer, you are invited to respond at home with and in your love answer. And when I call on us to name those we wish to pray for today, I invite you to speak their name aloud or to type it in the chat. Let's pray together. Most holy and merciful God, we give you thanks for this day. It is a day of profound joy. We give you thanks for who you are. You are creator of all that is, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And yet, we experience you new every morning. You made the world in beauty, and so we pray that you open our hearts to your power that moves around us and between us and within us until your glory is revealed in our love for all people, all communities. Transform us by your grace that we may be your people of mercy and compassion and forgiveness, reconciliation, that we may aid in healing what is broken. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. And on this day of Pentecost, O oh God, we pray to receive your Holy Spirit with freshness. We thank you for your work in our lives, and so we pray for healing. We pray to know and remember that we are not alone, that you walk alongside us even when everything about our experience changes and continues to change, you remain the same. That you lead us in love. You lead us in truth. Thank you. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And God, we pray for the leaders of our world, that their hearts and minds may be filled with a determination to unite rather than divide, to work together rather than against one another. We pray for wisdom and grace that they may cast a vision that benefits all people, not just the wealthy and the powerful. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. And we pray for our confirmands, Chiara and Henry. 
Strengthen them, O Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Bless them. Keep them. Empower them for your service and sustain them all the days of their life. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And now hear us, O God, as we name before you those we bear in our hearts today, speaking their names aloud. Jordan. Victor. Carrie. Dan. Heidi. God, we lift these names to you. Bring your peace and your hope and the power of your love to those we have named before you, O oh God. We trust you with these beloved people. Lord, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. And now hear us, O God, as we pray together the prayer your Son, Jesus, taught us using whatever words are most familiar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the time in our service that we offer to God a portion of what God has given to us. You are invited to get the Pilgrim Congregational Church using any of these methods. You can go online at www.pilgrimoakpark.org, click Give from the menu, then click on the Give to Pilgrim buttons. Visit be as a type.li app downloaded from your phone's app store. Text word Give to 833-721-1098. You can mail a check, and at this time, we ask that you give as generously as you are able. Now let us pray for the offering. God, thank you for these gifts we have received. We freely offer them back to you. Amen. And now it's time for announcements. I'd like to begin announcements by thanking everyone who participated in making, selling, 
delivering the donuts yesterday, cleaning up afterwards. Uh, it was lovely to be with you all. Thanks for showing up. You make this place really special. Uh, some announcements uh, not pertaining to donuts. We continue to plan uh, for our all church retreat at Tower Hill. The dates of that all church retreat have been changed to September 17th through the 19th. The retreat is still two nights and it does include four meals. The, the cost, excuse me, the cost is now set at $155 per person. This is a wonderful opportunity to spend some extended time with one another, be in nature, grow together. So please email me to express interest uh, in attending on these new dates with a fixed price of $155 per person. And please do mark your calendars for Sunday, June 13th, as we will be having worship outside in the parking lot that Sunday in person. Please plan on bringing your own chair. It will be a wonderful time to be together. And we are thankful to all who have recently been sending in those Passing of the Peace videos. Please keep sending them to Delina. We love to see your faces in worship. And following our worship uh, today, please join us for a virtual fellowship hour on Zoom. And lastly, Please join us in singing our closing hymn, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant. Please join us in singing, Won't You Let Me Be Your Servant, and we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 3. And now my sisters and brothers receive this benediction. On this day of Pentecost, may the joy of the Holy Spirit be yours. May you be renewed. May you find comfort. May you find peace for the road ahead. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.